There is a deep magic more powerful than any of us that rules over all of Narnia. It defines right from wrong and governs all our destinies, yours and mine. The Chronicles of Narnia was a childhood classic of mine as a kid. I thought the universe the film created was unique and epic. It looked so cool and interesting to me. Some people would find themselves being engulfed in Lord of the Rings mythology and find it to be cool, but that for me as a young kid, I was into Chronicles of Narnia. Lewis likes to go more in depth with his biblical illustrations than Tolkien, and while some secular people would probably find it too on the nose, I would still argue there's still a maturity to it, and it never felt like it was trying to be pretentious. It treated it with respect and honor. The movie is very simple and vague with its mythology that it's easy to get engaged into the story. C.S. Lewis knows how to be smart with his world building and Andrew Adamson, the director of the Chronicles movie, knew how to adapt Lewis's vision with great care. The thing about this universe is that it never feels watered down and it doesn't talk down to people as if they're dumb. There's an intelligence to this world and you can take these characters seriously. For a story that has Santa Claus, talking beavers, and centaurs, the film was able to pull off a dramatic story in great conclusion. Some of these things for a mature audience would have been handled ridiculously, but because of its great casting, voice acting, writing, music, VFX, and large-scale production design, it's all utilized very well. However, I do wish the film wasn't as thin as it is. For as long as the movie is, there could have been more dedication to the side characters and some of the main characters like Susan and Peter and explore how the world building works. It's not shown as much as I would have liked. I also enjoyed how the movie executed its message. In the real world, because these characters have to suffer through perilous tragedy, it brought out a worse kind of them that they didn't think they wanted, but ever since they adventured through Narnia and realized this place brings more about who they are and helped figure out where they belong, they're not the same as they used to and changed for the better. C.S. Lewis's work when writing fantasy novels has been closely related to using biblical symbolism and intertwining theological themes into his storytelling. A lot of laymen, Christians, and apologetics like deferring to his source material, and there's not much wonder why, because he treats the religion of Christianity seriously, and in doing so, it helps us gain some amount of knowledge about what Christianity is like and understand how God works in the Bible. I actually know some people who have a closer relationship with God and understood the Bible a lot more because of stories such as Chronicles of Narnia or Lord of the Rings, and when I watch this movie, I can really see why. The main protagonist, Aslan, represents the power and spirit of Christ, while the White Witch represents the deception and wickedness of Satan. The White Witch betrays and manipulates so that she can conquer and destroy. For example, she tricked Edmund into becoming her slave and doing what she pleases by looking kind, giving him pleasure through comfort and sweet treats. Even then, she tried to lie to him into thinking he would become a prince and rule over Narnia where his siblings would become his servants instead of ruling alongside him. This just shows the subtle trickery Satan is able to lure into us when we don't realize what we're doing. It could be through pleasures, persuasion, or bribery with desirable treasures. It reminded me of the story of the fall with what happened to Adam and Eve. They were told to not eat the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, and while yes, there's nothing inherently evil about the tree, the serpent decided to show some of his subtle tricks again by making them disobey God and assume God isn't as wise as you think, and you know better. You can gain something wonderful from this. Now for Aslan, the reason why I would say Aslan represents Christ is because I think the deep magic represents God. Some people would probably assume that it's supposed to be the Holy Spirit, and while maybe if I read the books I can change my mind, but through the movie it looks a lot more like Aslan is taking in advice from the deep magic and understanding Christianity, I would say Jesus is only wanting to do the will of his Father in Heaven, which I would say is God. The characteristics of Aslan in this movie paints him a picture of being powerful, humbling himself, and looking after others before himself. Not making things easy, but helps as best as he could. He treats people seriously and not like they're idiots, and everyone in the film looks up to him as being a savior to their hometown because of how amazing he is. Christ represents the exact same traits, and while in Jerusalem they treated the Messiah as a warrior that will take down Rome, Christ was represented as a savior from sin. He wanted to wash away the sins of the earth and bring back people to God and his kingdom. 
the film decided to take in Aslan as an actual warrior who would be a savior to help the people of Narnia from the terrors of the White Witch and help fulfill their prophecy. However, they still inserted their biblical themes of how good Christ is by having Aslan do what Christ does by sacrificing himself to help save all of his people, including sinners who would have been against him, such as Edmund. Thus, the resurrection scene makes it even more analogous to him being represented as Jesus, where Aslan read the quote by saying, That when a willing victim who has committed no treachery is killed in a traitor's stead, the stone table will crack. And even death itself would turn backwards. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you see here, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell right beside the subscribe button to be notified for future videos. And let me know in the comment section below what did you think of the movie and what would you like for me to do as a theological analysis next.